It's now time for member statements. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you, Speaker. Guten Tag on Hertzlig Willkommen, 47th Kitchener Waterloo Oktoberfest. Kitchener Waterloo Oktoberfest, otherwise known as Canada's greatest barbarian festival and the second largest Oktoberfest in the world, attracts over 700,000 visitors wow. every year, Great with over $1.5 million in proceeds being put back into the community. Waterloo Region has a long history of German roots. Kitchener was formerly named Berlin, and a large portion of the population identified themselves as being of German heritage. What makes Oktoberfest so great is that there is truly something for everyone. Oktoberfest hosts Canada's largest Thanksgiving Day parade, which is viewed by over 1.8 million Canadians nationwide. There are over 48 family, cultural, and sporting events, and of course, 19 Festhallen to experience some Gemütlichkeit. One of this year's Oktoberfest highlights includes a hometown hockey tour with host Ron McLean and NHL alumni, which gives families the chance to celebrate hockey and our community pride on national TV. I must also take a moment to thank the 500 passionate volunteers, without whom this festival would not be nearly as successful as it is today. Since 1969, the constant growth and success promoting a unique German heritage experience is a testament to the dynamic volunteers. I encourage all festival goers of Oktoberfest to come find me and get my official souvenir Oktoberfest pin. And speaker, as we say during the festival, Oktoberfest in Kitchener, Waterloo is wunderbar. Ein Prosit. <laughs> the member from uh, Tecumseh, uh, Windsor Tecumseh. Speaker, we lost a good friend in Windsor a few days ago. Bernie Campbell was only 64. He served in the RCMP for 33 years, a lot of that time on the drug squad in Windsor. I knew Bernie as a reporter, but we were friends who coached our kids in the same ball league in Forest Glade. His wife Brenda would look after me when I went to donate blood at the Red Cross. Speaker, Bernie had one of those fantastic mustaches. He looked a bit like a younger version of the actor Wilfred Brimley. Bernie was from Nova Scotia, Speaker. He played the bagpipes in the Windsor Police Pipe Band. Less than a week after he retired from the Mounties, he started working with the campus police at the University of Windsor. He was a great guy. He deserved a happy retirement, but he was hit with a rare disease that left him in a wheelchair for the final days of his life. His funeral is tomorrow in Windsor, Speaker. I won't be able to attend, but I do express condolences to Brenda and the boys, Ian, Peter, and James. And Speaker, another old friend passed away recently as well. Les Chafe was a bit of a curmudgeon around City Hall in Windsor. He was 82, a lovable guy, a real tax fighter and advocate. He never shied away from offering his opinions on how the mayor and councillors should be spending his tax money. Les was a veteran of the war in Korea. He tried to recruit me a few times to run for his favorite political parties, the Reform, the Alliance, the Conservatives. We didn't always agree, but we were friends, and I will miss our conversations. Condolences to Mary, his six kids, eight grandchildren, and seven great-grandchildren. Thank you. Hey, remember statements the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. October 15th of next week will mark Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day uh, across uh, the world. Uh, pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day is a remembrance day for pregnancy, loss, and infant deaths. This day is observed across Canada as well as throughout the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and throughout these uh, countries. Recognizing October 15th as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day allows people to acknowledge the significance of the life of each and every child lost. Pregnancy and infant loss are brought on by complex issues that cannot be addressed by simple checklists or genetic recommendations. Sadly, in Ontario, Mr. Speaker, 37,000 mothers experience pregnancy and infant loss each year. This day is observed with remembrance ceremonies and, and candlelight vigils, concluding with the International Wave of Light, a worldwide lighting of candles at 7 p.m. on the 15th. Here in Ontario, the Peace Bridge in Fort Erie, Niagara Falls, and even the CN Tower will be lit up 
with pink and purple lights in memory of these little angels we have lost. Please do what you can in your own community to support mothers and families who have gone through this gut-wrenching loss of a child. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Further member statements, the member from Bruce Gray Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured to rise and recognize five outstanding athletes from my riding, all of whom trained hard and put their best foot forward to clinch big victories at the 2015 Toronto Pan Am Pair Pan Am Games and make Bruce Gray Owen Sound proud. Jason Crone of Shell Lake, Josh Cassidy, a native of Burgoyne, Karen Van Nest of Wyerton, Josh Farrell of Slugging Shores, and Kate Sox of Bogner. After winning a silver medal at the 2012 London Paralympic Games, Jason Crone came out of retirement to try and win gold at the 2015 Toronto Pair Pan Am Games. Jason has always made the folk in Bruce Gray Owen Sound proud. He first made headlines in 2007 after earning a bronze at the 2008 Beijing Paralympic Games. Josh Cassidy won his third silver of Pair Pan Am Games. He also won a bronze medal in the men's 800-meter T54 wheelchair race. His finish time was 1 minute 45.25 seconds. Karen Van Ness took silver at the Pair Pan Am Games. In addition to shooting and archery, Karen displayed her rowing skills in 2006 when she won a bronze medal at the World Championships. Josh Farrell, who was named to the national team in 2014, won gold in the men's F20 shot put with a Pair Pan record throw of 14.05 meters. And Kate Sox of Bogner, after graduating with a PhD in Rehabilitation Sciences and Anatomy, became the first University of Toronto athlete at the Games to win a medal when she and rowing partner raced to gold in the women's lightweight double skulls. We are very proud of these very inspiring athletes, and I congratulate all of them on their extraordinary skills, determination, and efforts. On behalf of everyone in Bruce Gray Owen Sound and everyone in Ontario and Canada, I wish them much continued success at their next stop, Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statement, the member from Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, governments around the world are preparing for the climate summit that will be convened in Paris this December. It's generally expected that government in Ontario will be bringing forward cap and trade and other climate measures when the House returns after October 20th. Speaker, I have said before, and I will say now, that the government should bring forward cap and trade and other measures for review by a legislative committee. Climate change poses huge challenges. So does action on climate change. There is no easy route forward. If the government wants to be successful with the measures it introduces, it will need public review of those measures. People will look for measures to be effective, fair, and transparent. Without a public review, the task to implement climate action will be hobbled. Speaker, I urge the government to build public review into its plans. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member statements, the member for Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, I'm honoured and proud to share that Darth, Dr. Arthur MacDonald from Queen's University in my riding of Kingston and the Islands has been awarded the 2015 Nobel Prize in Physics, only the second time in Canadian history that that's happened. He shares this prestigious gold standard recognition with Tokyo's Takari Kyai Jitar in solving the stubborn neutrino puzzle. They have ushered in a new era in physics. Dr. McDonald's team, two kilometers underground at the Queen Sudbury Neutrino Observatory, which my, M my colleague MPP uh, Quinter demonstrated uh, and la helped launch in 1987, they demonstrated that neutrinos change identities on their way from the sun, ergo they must have mass. Neutrinos are the most abundant particles in the universe after light. Some come from the sun, but even our own bodies produce streams of them. 2.5 billion neutrinos pass through a business card every single second, and although their weight is negligible, together they weigh about the same as every visible star in the universe. This is an excellent example of the importance of supporting pure curiosity-based research, and half of all of that Canadian research, I must say, comes right here for, in Ontario. I'm deeply proud of the province's continued commitment to research and innovation in science and technology. These investments not only ensure our province remains competitive in the global economy, it inspires our highly qualified graduates to follow in Dr. McDonald's footsteps. Congratulations, Dr. McDonald, and thank you to all of the scientific community whose passion, dedication, and sheer hard work helps us to understand. We all claim you as our own today, and we share this wonderful accomplishment with you. Merci. Thank you. Thank you.
Further member statements? The member from here on Bruce. Thank you, Speaker. The month of October marks the celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, in which people of Latin origin come together to to pay tribute to their shared identity. Hispanic Heritage Month is celebrated widely with festivities in Canada, the United States, and throughout Latin America. Last year, along with the PC Caucus, I was happy to support the Hispanic Heritage Month Act, which proclaimed the month of October as Hispanic Heritage Month, and 2015 marks the inaugural year for the festivities here in Ontario. In celebration, my colleagues, MPP Ted Arnott and MPP Gila Marteau, brought remarks on behalf of our caucus and our leader, Patrick Brown, at the inaugural Hispanic Heritage Month reception held at Queen's Park last week. And I understand from the member from Wellington Halton Hills that the member from Thor Thornlow stole the show as she uh, kicked up her heels with the dancers. And that's what it's all about. The Latin community, one of the fastest growing in the province, has made many valuable contributions to Ontario's growth and development. Ontario is home to more than 400,000 first, second, and third generation Canadians of Hispanic origin. It is my hope that all Ontarians will take time during this month to learn more about the history of the Latin community in this province, as well as the important role that the Hispanic people play in shaping our social, economic, political, and multicultural fabric. I'm excited to celebrate the vibrant Hispanic culture this month during Ontario's first Hispanic Heritage Month, and I hope my fellow members will join me in doing so. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Kitchener Centre. This past Friday, I spent the day, like many of my colleagues, meeting with constituents. I was in my riding of Kitchener Centre. I want to tell you about one couple who made quite an impression on my staff and me. They are selfless, dedicated, and very compassionate. They're one of about 60 families in Waterloo Region who have adopted older children. Now, adoption agencies, they tell us that it's healthy newborns that are the first choice in adoption. But older kids with physical, mental, and developmental issues such as fetal alcohol syndrome, autism, and emotional trauma from years of abuse, oftentimes nobody wants these kids. This Waterloo Region couple has adopted four children with various developmental issues. First of all, a brother and sister in 2007, and then in 2011, a set of young twins. I was very happy to share with them news of how our government is improving the adoption system. We're helping more young people connect with waiting families. We're reducing financial barriers, and we're supporting uh, culturally appropriate placements. Mr. Speaker, there were 862 adoptions in Ontario last year, but still 6,400 Crown wards are still waiting to be adopted. When I asked this couple, why did you decide to adopt kids with developmental issues? And the answer was quite simply, because there's a need. So, Mr. Speaker, children waiting to be adopted, they share a common sense of desire for a stable, positive, and loving environment to help them reach their full attention. Um, I congratulate all parents who make this very selfless commitment. Th thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Northumberland, Quinty West. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this past weekend, I had the great opportunity to volunteer with a TD three-day program. I joined the good people from the town of Coburg, Ganaraska Region Conservation Authorities, and many others at the site of a future park area in Coburg. It particularly impressed me to see the parents teaching their kids the value of giving back to our wonderful communities. With a little sweat and hard work, we were able to plant over 300 trees. This is a beautiful beginning to Coburg Future Cooey Park that will offer 4.6 acres of open space along Coburg Creek. Mr. Speaker, this was one of 150 such events taking place across Canada with TD employees, their families and friends who joined the local volunteers to green up the communities. Launched in Canada in 2010, this program has engaged employees, customers, and community partners in four countries. Thousands of volunteers, from, bro from brownies to bankers, have planted over 185,000 trees. In addition, 50,000 50, trees will be planted across Canada this year. I'm proud of the Town of Cobra commitment to preserve, enhance, and promote ecological diversity. I learned that. When a tree is over 80 years old, its, it's ecological, environmental, air cleaning, and oxygen producing 
benefits are drastically reduced, making the planting of new trees and reforestation a vital part of our communities and global environment. Mr. Speaker, this is an awesome experience. I wish to thank the TD Bank and the Town of Coburg for their continued commitment to our global environmental health and well-being. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for reports by